Welcome to Ober and Dog, dot, 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 best friends, question mark. My name's Chris. My name is Todd. And I'm oof. over, t- and I have a oof, dog. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> oof, oof. I was like, I don't know where to go from here. Yeah, no, this this is my, my spinoff podcast because uh, I told Obert that I was going to break the news to the world that he got a dog. So, <laughs> world, Obert has a dog. Yeah, this is an exclusive interview. We're announcing to the world that I have a dog. <laughs> Does it have a name? Yes. So, her name is Popcorn. She's one. Nice. Yeah. And when did? You, how long have you had said popcorn? Popcorn's been with me for like six days now. Oh, okay. Yeah. What kind, what kind of dog is Popcorn? She is like an Australian Shepherd Border Collie mix. So nice. I had an Australian Shepherd. <laughs> yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, he was awesome. <laughs> he lived to be like a thousand. Yeah. But not not anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you must you got him when he, when he was nine hundred ninety three. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, but no, popcorn and I've been having a lot of fun. We've been doing some good bonding. Um, she likes cheese, and she likes to lay on my bed where she's not supposed to, <laughs> and she doesn't like to be on a leash. These are these are the things I know about popcorn so far. Yeah. Okay. So it's. I think it's safe to say, as of right now, is Ober and Popcorn not quite best friends? I mean, you don't know all her likes and dislikes. That's that's true. I mean, she's Just, my best friend, but I don't know if I'm her. Best. No, she's my. She's. I think I'm her best friend. I mean, she's I. She's man's, she for, man's but, best friend. That's what yeah. they say. Yeah. So she just tolerates you. Right. Yeah. She puts like, me. She's like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. I'm just in it for the cheese. Do whatever. <laughs> he's all right. The cheese better, but he's yeah. okay. <laughs> so in the last month, I got a cat and Obert's got a dog. So Todd's going to have to get like a turtle or a ferret or something like that. Todd's going to bring a parrot, a parrot on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> How do I get stuck with a ferret or a parrot? You could have or a beta a fish. I don't know. <laughs> beta fish might work if you get a parrot you can hand it down to your children and your children's children yeah, yeah. Don't, don't those things like live forever yeah i they think li- so they live a really, really long time yeah, yeah. be like haha children good, good luck with this <laughs> take, fucking thing take this talking bird <laughs> yeah you could get you could get like a galapagos turtle those will live to be over 100 <laughs> my, my parrot would be the grumpiest parrot on the face of the planet yeah yeah. It would be just like named Cranky. <laughs> it would just yeah. sit in the like we wouldn't be able to record a podcast anymore because it'd sit in the background and just yell obscenities. Yeah, I think I think of all of the pe- uh, pets a podcaster could get, a parrot would be high up on the list of bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, like throughout the whole thing, and I'm Cranky. <laughs> <It's just over. laughs> I mean, maybe a hamster. I could get by with a hamster. Hamsters? Okay, we we used to have some hamsters hamsters in the Adam Oates household, so... You know, you know. Uh, guinea pig, probably not. They're a little weird. Oh, we, tsh, guinea pigs are cool, too. I had guinea pigs. But, like, a, ham, a hamster's, like, small enough. And, like, they don't last very long. Yeah, I had, guinea, I had guinea pig once. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Tud needs a pet with a expiration date very close to when getting it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Ted wants to just fall in love with the pet and then it could die. <laughs> that's that's not how pets work, Tud. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I but... specifically got popcorn at at a young age because I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna fall in love with this thing, she's gonna have to last a really long time. I don't want to have to mm-hmm. deal with that anytime soon. So listen. Yeah. Maybe it's just my new business idea. I will get a hamster. I'll get two hamsters, and then I'll start a hamster farm, and then I'll sell hamsters for a living. Hmm. Or okay. you could just sell the electricity they generate on their wheels. There you go. Could also, I mean, could also do that. I feel like my house is big enough that if I covered every square foot with a hamster cage with a wheel inside, I might be able to generate enough to turn on a light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But those LEDs are so efficient now. You could probably do that with just Very like true. a small team of well-trained. <laughs> small, small trade of hamsters. hamsters. Hamster wheels. <laughs> the, the, one of them stops working and all the lights go out. <laughs> <laughs> I could just envision Tud like, with like a whip, like whipping these hamster cages, like mush, mush. It's like the world's tiniest whip. <laughs> <laughs> 
I need I need to record a podcast. Like a Munch. Dent, dental floss is what he uses to wear. <laughs> oh man! All right, this was a rocky start, but we got there. All right, we got Congratu- there. Congratulations, the, the, guys. The podcast is not condoned with big animals. No, no. I said the cages. I said the cages. Okay. I mean, that's not better, really. I mean, <laughs> the podcast doesn't better. condone animal abuse in any. Shape no, no, no. We all love. No. We all love animals, especially so. from Tut, because I feel like <laughs> I was made the brunt of this for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have any animals, so uh, who knows? You didn't get cranky, and uh... that's true. And this means I just need to like adjust, and like next week I'll have an animal. Okay. All right. <laughs> from here on out, audio quality to the. To the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just say so. It's only going to be a matter of time before uh, the pot, the listening audience hears popcorn. I don't think it will happen on tonight's episode because uh, she looks pretty exhausted. But uh, she'll chime in, I'm sure, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, anyways, since we're all well, all two of us, and then Tud are taking care of animals. I'm. It's a very, it's a very busy, thirsty job. So. What do you guys? Yeah. What are you guys drinking tonight? There you go. So the, so the guy who's not who does not own an animal is going to go first this week. Just what you got? Just to make the animal owners a little bit more thirsty. So this week I brought a beer that uh co that co-host of the pod Jordan sent me a couple weeks ago from that uh, beer shipment that I got. If you guys recall, I drank the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin Broken Skull IPA on the podcast. This is mm. another beer oh, that yeah. you sent me, and this one is called uh, Blind Pig. By Russian River Brewing Company. Uh, Russian River. Nice. Russian River is the brewery that brews uh, Pliny the Elder and Pliny the Younger. And part of the reason I did the beer trade with Jordan was because I really wanted to try Pliny the Old Elder and the Younger, but he was unable to find it. So in its in its stead, he sent me Blind Pig, which is another IPA by Russian River Brewing. And this is uh, Blind Pig is a Prohibition era term for a speakeasy. Our very first brewery was named the Blind Pig Brewing Company, which was located in Tem- Temecula, California. It was here that we first fell in love with the hops and IPAs. Our Blind Pig IPA is gener- generously hopped with hints of citrus woody notes and lingering bitterness. So mm, I'm assuming this tasty. is probably a, a really old recipe for them. So let's check it out. As you guys can see, it's a filtered IPA. It uh, looks like a West Coast style. Nice. Sounds really good. It is definitely a West Coast style IPA. You know, there are definitely hints of citrus in there, uh, definitely a lot of woody notes, a lot of pine, you know, very, very, very different from the New England style IPAs that we all know and love. This is more of your traditional style IPA, more like a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale or a Sierra Nevada uh, Torpedo. It's actually probably the closest thing I can think of that this compares to. So do you like those beers? How do you feel about it? Obviously, we've discussed that we all kind of like Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is probably my favorite beer by them, but Torpedo is probably a close second. This one's very good. This one, it's an easy drinker. Uh, it's it's very bitter. So Chris, you would be a real big fan of this, just because it's got nice. that bitterness that you know I'm not an, I'm not overly a fan of. But this one is solid. It doesn't have so much bitter to where it it hurts. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as the woody notes, I'd say probably more of like a sycamore. That's a oddly specific tree to pick. <laughs> well, you know, we all know that I went out and I, you know, ate all the fruit. Maybe I went out and I, I licked some trees. You don't know. Yeah. We don't. <laughs> so what, what part of a sycamore does it taste like? The trunk. The, okay. Outside okay. of, like, the bark? No, no, no. In, inside, where all the sap is, you know. Okay. Mm. So you like a, like a split sycamore log. Yeah. You, like, you pour this beer over that and then collect it on, underneath. Yeah, well, I feel like what you do is, how this beer is made is you take the sycamore log, you you take a sycamore tree, you hollow it out, mm. and make like a like a beer shoot through it. So you take a Bud Light from the other side and pour it down. It. <laughs> and out comes this beer. And it, yeah, it, it, it goes through that, and then it goes into like a, a batch of like citrus IPA, or citrus uh, hops, and the beer, you know, filters through that, and then boom, you have Blind Pig coming out the other side. Wow, I want to go to this brewery. It sounds like Willy Wonka's <laughs> factory here. <laughs> I love how in that Bud Light is the starting beer. Is <laughs> right, that like, right. They always start with Bud Light, and then they hollow out different trees, and depending that's on how what you get tree different they hollow, beers. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's how that works. And then you, uh, at the very end, you French press it with whatever other notes you're trying to get, and boom, boom. I mean, it's ba- it's basically how babies are made too. Oh, by the way, um, Russian River, I uh, we apologize for blowing the the roof off of your very successful business venture by yeah, now telling everybody how to that. do. 
Yeah. Yeah, probably should have thought about that. <laughs> Hashtag Oops. whoops. No, overall, though, very solid uh, very solid beer. Um, I'd probably give this a 4.0. I would love to try other things by Russian River. Obert, I know you've told me in the past that you've had the chance of trying other Russian River beers, including Pliny the Elder. And uh, you enjoyed them, too, but you didn't find them to be particularly any different from other things that you've had before. Yeah, I've had Pliny, I think, twice now. Most recently, um, just a few weeks ago. And um, it was very tasty beer, don't get me wrong. But I didn't think it was anything extraordinary in terms of, like, nothing that I hadn't had before or it wasn't, like, packed with a hop punch. It was just, like, a really solid, all-around, well-balanced beer. Um one of the favorite breweries that I've kind of gotten away from over the years, haven't really ha- had as much lately, um, is Stone. And I really like their Arrogant Bastard. This reminded me a little bit of like a Stone Arrogant Bastard. So hmm. it was, it was yeah, tasty, very like, you know, it wasn't like a super juicy hop forward beer, but it was like, it, it packed some hops in a West Coast style, kind of like what you're saying this blind pig was like. So so you're saying that, like, I've hyped up Pliny the Elder to be something fantastic in my head, maybe maybe without merit? Well, I mean, we all have those those things in life where you're like, you know, you want to try it, you want it to be great, and then you get there and you're like, oh, this is just like, it's like meeting a celebrity. You're like, oh, you're just like a real person. It's like trying a beer, and it's, you know, it's a beer. It's not like unicorns and rainbows distilled into a glass. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I've definitely heard that before about Pliny the Elder. Just it's it's good. It's really good, but it's just like, eh, you know, with how many different beers there are and how many people are making IPAs, it's just it's hard to set yourself out, especially since it was one of the OGs on the West Coast, you know. Right. I think that's why it got its reputation. How cool would it be if it actually was made with like real rainbows and like unicorns though? So. Well, actually, that's what they do at the Alchemist, I believe. That's how they make oh, okay. Hetty Topper. Uh, that's how Hetty Toppers make. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, I'd I'd probably drink it. I mean, I'd I'd have to, even though you know, I, I'm sure unicorns would be harmed in the making of it. I would definitely try it. Well, yeah, and I think Treehouse's new brewery that's that was built around a pot of gold that they found at the end of a rainbow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So it's a little different, but similar. Yeah. Right. I was wondering why they built it up there. That's weird. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it makes it makes sense now. So, Todd, you gave it a 4.0, right? Yes. What do you think the Untapped Universe thinks of it? I think they're probably very similar to me. I'm going to say 4.01. Mm. I'm going to guess 4.11 based on what I know about Russian River. I think it's a it's a hyped hyped up brewery. Hop hype? It's got hop that hype. hop hype. Uh, four point one seven. So yeah, Obert, you were a little bit, a little bit more on the the, the trail, the trail of their pot of gold. Or yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, whatever that is. So. <laughs> so that's, I mean, so so they they think a lot of this. I I mean, I like it. It's very good. Oh, um, I was actually just going to say, I took another sip and it's warmed up a little bit more. Uh, as it gets warmer, you can taste more of the uh, the citrusy notes. It definitely has a lot of uh, flavors of probably not like a tangerine or like a clementine, but more of like an actual like orange style flavor. Okay. Nice. That sounds really tasty. Um, well, after you talking about hyped up beers. Maybe I a have... hint of lemon too. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, have a, I have a beer that I think has been, seems like it's got a little bit of hype surrounding it. But I was going to pass it off to Chris. Mm, Chris. Chris mentioned to me his beer needs to warm up a little bit first. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, this is giving you a hard time. Attention. So go go ahead. Over, <laughs> okay. What are you drinking today? I have the um, Fremont Brewery Dark Star. It's their 2019 edition, uh, limited release. It's got one of those fancy wax coat seals over the bottle cap, so you know it's real good. Very fancy. Is this the brewery that does like the Dark Star Day every year? Out of like I Chicago, don't... is this where they're from? No, or... Fremont is. Um, it's the north end of Seattle. Okay. So, so no. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not too familiar with the Dark Star Day that you're talking about, but this is a barrel. It's an imperial oatmeal stout aged in bourbon barrels. And um, I think we've all had those type of beers before. Yeah. I'm just going to read a little bit from the label here. And it says, this year's release is a blend of 24, 18, 12, and 8-month bourbon barrel aged Dark Star in 7 to 12-year-old Kentucky bourbon barrels. 
The roasted and chocolate malts complement the smooth oats to bring you a stout delight wrapped in the gentle embrace of bourbon barrel age warmth. A touch of sweetness dances in balance with the hops to finish with a wave, and then she's gone. So this is uh, 13.1 ABV, as you would expect with a beer with this character. Mm. It sounds delicious. Yeah. What what kind of SRMs are we talking about? Um, it's pretty black. It's mm, yes. It's so harder to get seven and a half bl- billion. Yeah, it's harder to get a, a darker beer than this. But uh, <laughs> by the way, the other the other beer I was thinking of was Dark Lord by Three Floyds. Dark Lord oh, Day. Oh, mm. yeah, yeah. Three Floyds is pretty good. But you know, I'm definitely getting that strong bourbon bourbony oatmeal stout on the nose. Um, if you've ever had one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's just, it's a boozy, boozy, like sweet raisin aroma, I think would be how I would describe it. I get a little bit of a chocolate aroma as well. But um, after that all being said, it's finally, it's finally warm enough, Todd. So here, here <laughs> goes nothing. Let's hear it. Yeah. It sounds amazing. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys remember... I, and maybe it's just me because I, maybe I was late to the party, but I I figure I think like three years ago I was just like all of a sudden during winter I was drinking bourbon stouts all the time and I was just like I don't know if they it was like they were the new hit thing or if it's just like all of a they sudden were Chris's like, new hit thing for sure it was yeah it was new for me but <laughs> well, no I love I've, them I can't get enough I've been telling you forever that you need to start drinking bourbon and you've been like no I don't want to drink no bourbon I never I never I didn't say that actually I had thought about it but it's also expensive. Yeah, but, I mean, it I lasts mean, a long time for a bottle. You, you spend twenty dollars on a four pack of beer. You could also <laughs> spend, you know, seventy dollars on a bottle of bourbon that'll last you. That'll give you, you know, triple or quadruple the amount of drinks. Anyway, um, this I reviewed on the podcast. Um, I believe last winter, the Ivan the Terrible from Big Sky Brewery. This beer is very similar to that beer. Um, you know, it's it's got a good viscosity it's a little thicker than most beers um you know not very carbonated but it's it it, you know it has a almost like brandy like flavor of that brandy sweetness and the little bit of the bite does it coat Um, the mouth it does yeah definitely coats the back of the tongue as you as you drink it um this is just exactly what i look for in a bourbon barrel aged oatmeal stout and i think Fremont, you knocked it out of the park again this year with, you know, don't don't change anything. I think, you know, mixing four different ages of, of beer <laughs> together seemed to work out well for you. So <laughs> Now, uh, does it disclose what type of bourbon barrel it's aged in? Is it like Willet or Buffalo Trace? Or... No, it just says Kentucky bourbon barrels. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you get lucky with those where it tells you what they aged them in, and then you can kind of try to see if you can... If you can taste the difference in the bourbons through the beer, which is a lot, I found a lot easier in beer than it is actually tasting the bourbon side by side. Oh wow, huh? No, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, this is I, the Ivan the 2019 Ivan the Terribles are also out. I was looking at them side by side with this beer in the store. I didn't pick one up, but I think I need to now because that one's always a classic. And um, I'm just gonna sit here quietly enjoying my my 13 percent beer. For the rest of this podcast, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say this beer earned a solid uh, on the new Untapped scale a 4.3. Okay, and I'm g- gonna guess the average is like a 4.33. Ooh, very close. It's actually a 4.38 for the 2019 Ooh. version. Wow. So yeah, wow, very close. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Obert, um, while you're going back to that that package store to buy the Ivan the Terrible. <laughs> You know, if you want to scoop me up a bottle too and like put it in the mail and like send it to me, that'd be fantastic. I, yeah, I can I can arrange something like that. That sounds good. I think you'll really enjoy it. So. Yeah, and if, mm. and if you find one of these that you're drinking too, well, they have. They, so this is the original Dark Star, and they also had on the shelf next to it the Dark Star with coffee, like the coffee Ooh. Dark Star, and they also had a maple syrup something or other that was sold out. You know so. what? I'm not wow. picky. I'm not picky. Okay. You know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, just... I do. I do owe you for those main beers, so um, I might be able to send one your way. Sweet. See, folks, it always helps to help a friend out. Right. It does. Nice. So, Chris, now that your beer has properly warmed, I hope so. Yeah. You're, you're drinking a Bush Light 
Um, yeah, it's a bush light. <laughs> I, I wanted to warm it up so it's uh, proper 45 you know. degree temperature. Do you want to go like stick it in the microwave or something so you get it a little bit warmer? Enjoy at 54 degrees on your bush light can. Uh, no, I'm also drinking a stout, if you couldn't tell by the fact that I needed to have it warmer. Wait till the mountains turn yellow on that <laughs> course. <laughs> they start, he waits so long, they start to turn green as they start to flourish with light. <laughs> uh so I'm actually drinking something uh, that's a collaboration that's actually put out by uh, the 12% Beer Project. So, By the way, they a- had fun fact. They opened up their new brewery today. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I saw that they the- got permits and stuff yeah, already. Their, their official brewery is in East Haven, Connecticut, and it opened today. Oh, wow. So that's when, exciting. So when you're hearing the sound of my voice. What are we doing here? Listeners. Why are we not listen- Why are we not drinking beer there? I know, right? <laughs> We that's, should uh, we should do that next time you guys are in town. Yep, that's the game plan. <laughs> you know, you should uh, just come over right now. Yeah, we'll right. just I'll just hop in the car. Yeah, sorry, work. I'm going to be late to work. <laughs> I'll be six days late. <laughs> I mean, Chris, you have this infatuation with driving places, so you know I, I do not. I it, hate it, driving. Actually, didn't but. surprise me when you said you're going to hop in the car, but like Obert, like you know, he knows how to fly. So well, it, now I have a dog, so right. that's so going to help. He's got to ride things. the dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that? We uh, like to go on really long walks. <laughs> what's that thing called? Uh, the uh, Iditarod. Yeah, yeah. We, there we you do, go. We'll sled race over. We'll be there in a, a couple weeks <laughs> with some life saving medicine. So, <laughs> oh, but yes. So, um, sorry, this, collaboration. Yes, collaboration uh, between Evil Twin Brewing and Prairie Artisan Ales. Ooh. So, hmm. Yeah, uh, it is also 13% alcohol, so this is going to be a fun end of the episode for me and Obert, but uh, it's called Bible Belt. It's an imperial stout aged on coffee, vanilla, chilies, and ca- cacao nibs. Ooh. So, a lot going on. A lot going on there. That looks like a fun can. Oh, yeah, no, the can's really cool. Well, I don't know if cool is the right thing, but it's got, like, uh, drawings of the brewer's and like kind of like a funny little like family picture on the front. <laughs> <laughs> and like, then, and yes, then family you guys remember pictures the, on the the DVD cover of Step Brothers? Yes, yes, very reminiscent of that. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. It, that that um, guy even kind of looks like I know he's not in Step Brothers, but he kind of looks like Zach Galifianakis. Gal- yeah. I can't say his last name. You know, Zachy Zach G. Galifianakis. Zachy G. Yeah. Zachy G. Yeah, Wolfpack that's right. guy. <laughs> uh kind of does. Yeah. So the can's pretty funny. Um, they got the family pit portraits of both breweries, so pretty cool. Um, and the beer itself is a billion SRM as well. Oh, wow. I put Look it in my that. poor character glass and poor, <laughs> poor uh, Charmander. You can't see him at all. Oh, Hot I was gonna, I was looking there, for um, there's his head. I was looking for Mario, Super Mario, but uh, no, I couldn't find him. I I didn't think of it. I didn't think of that. I was I already had this one dirty. So yeah, I really like those poor character glasses. But the, my only problem with them is that they're not dishwasher safe. And I just feel like <laughs> when I am in the cupboard and I see a dishwasher safe glass next to a not dishwasher safe glass, I always will be like, eh, I don't want to go through the trouble of pan washing this. So I never reach for it. So hashtag fun fact for you, Ober, and this will, this will greatly improve your beer drinking life and your dish doing life, I think. Drink beer while doing dishes? You could do that. That is that <laughs> easy. Good that, life tip. That works. Um. No, with a beer glass, very similar to a a growler, you're not supposed to wash them with like soap. Hmm. You, so what do you wait? What do you mean? So if you just took like say like Chris's poor character glass, if you just took it and, and ran it underneath really hot water, that's enough to kill the bacteria in there. And the, then when you pour new beer in there, obviously because it's alcohol, it's it's full of alcohol. Um, that'll also kill some of the back. That'll also kill the bacteria too. So. It's just, think of it the so same way. Think of it the same way. You're telling me as all I need to do is rinse my glasses. Correct. Unless I'm drinking something other than beer or water out of them. Right. So, like, think about it like with a growler. Like, you know, you're everybody always says you do not wash a growler. Don't put soap in it. Just rinse it out with really hot water. Let it dry, and then bring it back to be filled. Same idea with your beer glass. Um, what happens when you put soap in a beer glass is that when you pour this, when you pour the beer into the glass. The, the soap residue, because soap is always left behind on, on the glass, actually 
can alter the flavor of the beer and actually can affect the the head creation on top of the beer as well. Makes sense, yeah, because so, it will like destroy those bubbles, huh? Yeah, so you actually should just say screw it and just get the non dishwasher safe glasses because you're never gonna really wash them again, anyways. Well, that's a good, really good point. That, and this leads me to ask another question, and I know we're so sidetracked here because Chris is mid mid beer review here. <laughs> <laughs> it, he's, it's right. got to get warmer, anyways. It's fine. All right, I'll save the you know what, I'll save the question for later at the pot. Okay, this is a, a, a sneak peek. Let's but, let's j- just to finish <laughs> this point before Chris goes. That's why at some breweries you'll see them they don't they don't use dishwashers. They literally just use the sink method, and they you know, they take your glass, they rinse it out, they dip it in the the really hot water, and then they sanitize it. It's so no soap touches the glass. I learned that from Brewery Legitimus. Hmm. Yeah, they have just like the sanitizer, basically. Yep. Very cool. Interesting. Hmm. There you go. Fun fact. So. So anyway, back to your back to your thirteen percent beer here, Chris. Yeah. Anyways, I got a I got a big big dark boy right here. So. Um. <laughs> Chris is like, I just want to drink my beer. <laughs> I know, and I I was gonna take a sip while y'all were talking, but I didn't want to be like, whoa, you know, like, and be like, this beer's so good, even though it probably would have gotten us back on track quicker. But anyways, uh, so on the nose, it's it smells like a, a strong stout. I mean, maybe I get a, a smidge of the vanilla on the nose, but not too much. It just sounds like like a boozy boozy stout. So I'm pretty excited for it. Let's see see how it is. So It'd be funny if like he loved it so much that he just started going cow. Yeah. Like an air horn, but with cacao. I like it. We're going to add that to our, our soundboard. Todd going, cacao. Cacao. <laughs> when we finally figure out how to use a soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is pretty awesome. Um, it is strong, but surprisingly, the there's so much going on that it doesn't taste overly boozy. Um, I get a lot of the chilies. The chilies add like a nice nice heat to it it isn't super spicy but it does add a nice heat like throughout the whole thing but it's easily mellowed out by the vanilla and uh the coffee is very subtle in there yeah it's just it's just a really solid beer just really really good um nice and dark nice and full got a good good mouth feel um uh and then i, I mean just the cacao nibs they add a little something towards the end but nothing too too crazy i don't think um you know it's 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 very very good beer. Very Do you solid get that beer. chili flavor? Do you get the little sweet heat or what? Yeah yeah yeah. I was I was mentioning it, it adds some heat to it, and you kind of get it. You I kind of taste it more up front than towards the end of it. So it kind of hits you pow pow with some uh, chili heat, and then it kind of mellows out with the with the vanilla and the coffee, and then a little bit of tartness at the very end. So so um, but so no cacao. I mean, that might be some of the sweet tartness kind of hmm. stuff, you know? Well, it sounds pretty tasty. And so you picked this up in a 16-ounce can? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I got this from Craft Beer Cellar again. And mixed six-pack. Okay. Right. So this is a single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My future business venture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tud's, as they're known, Tud's future job. Um, no, yeah. Got it there. It's, uh, it's a really, really good stout. Pretty happy with it right now. But, sounds uh, really I'm, tasty. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a four and a quarter. That's really good. Yeah, no, it is. It is very good. You know, I I think there could have been there could have been some more stuff. Like, I mean, I I always like the coffee flavor. If the coffee flavor was more present, then I probably would have given it a little bit higher. But um, now is this 2018, 2019 barrel aged? What which one is this one? Oh, holy shit! I didn't even notice. Oh man, this is a special treat. This was canned on ten nine two thousand seventeen. This is two years old. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's been hiding, like... in the, hiding in the back of the cellar. I know. I didn't even notice that until I just looked at the bottom of the can. So, holy crap. So, it's going to be like, they hated that one. That one was a two. <laughs> yeah, that, this one's the worst one out of all of them. No. Yeah, they, um, they say it says bad. <laughs> so, if you had to guess out of the 1,364 check-ins, what do you think the Untapped Universe rated this? I'm going to say a four, three, three. Ooh, so close yet so far. Four point two three. Oh man, That's a pretty okay. good guess though. Yeah, right on par with me though. So yeah, Prairie is. By the, for people who don't know, Prairie is really good at making stouts. That's like what they're known for. Yeah, I actually remember we've talked about not on the podcast. I think we talked about them IRL um, 
about a stout that you had, a coconut stout or something that yeah. was pretty banging. Yeah, and then in our beer box, I actually in our beer draft that we did not bro- uh, broadcast on the podcast, which we should have actually. Now that I think back on it, that was my first yeah. draft pick was the the Prairie. Mm, yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's funny. I didn't know that. I don't remember <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, they they do a lot of bo- like a lot of their uh, stouts are bombs. It's so like birthday bomb, uh, chocolate bomb. They're they're all mm. bombs and they're they're all delicious. <laughs> yeah. Well, they made another good one with the help of Evil Twin Brewing. Um, Ooh, I don't know. So. Prairie? No, uh, Evil Twin. Oh yeah, because they were they were brewing out of twelve percent, right? Yeah, well, I mean that's where your can came from, right? Yeah, well, I yeah I knew that, but <laughs> just even some of their other stuff because like seven did, years ago did um because don't they do the like the Molotov light and all that stuff too? Yeah, like like super Molotov and yeah, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of those beers. I'm I had surprised. one a long time ago. I'm surprised. Evil Twin like, has never really done it for me. You're like a big some bitter the, guy, and like those I, are just yeah. straight bitter. Uh, maybe I'd have to have it again. I, I only had one a, a, a few years ago. Uh, Evil Twin has made some really good stuff more recently, I'll say. They do, like, the Even More Jesus mm, and, yeah. like, the uh, Imperial Donut Break. They do the Geyser Goes with Two Roads, the Im- Imperial Mexican Biscotti Cake Break. They do some yeah. good stuff. They're just, I don't go out of my way to buy Evil Twin for the most part. Because, um, yeah, like Wait, you said, a lot of their you stuff You said they is, did yeah. Even More Jesus? Do they do Sweet Baby Jesus? No, they do. Um, cl- they do the other, the other Jesus beer. Um, Sweet Baby Jesus is Duclaw Brewing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, or Duclaw. They do Duclaw. like even more Cocoa Jesus, uh, Liquid Fudge Brownie, Liquid Fudge Brownie Jesus, um, <laughs> uh, Jesus, do- Jesus, comma Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> On Moss Cafe, Jesus. Okay, all right. Um, even more pecan pie, Jesus. So all the even mores. Yeah. If- if there's even more in front of a name, then it's most likely them. Yeah, so. I think they're stout. I think they're they should probably be, probably be more well known for their stouts because now that I'm listening through all their beers, I'm like, oh, their stouts are really good. Their IPAs are eh, but their stouts are delicious. So the the one thing I wanted to ask earlier was, you know, we we're talking about growler care, and what do you guys do to to keep your growlers fresh and and smelling good and like not get that beer that that beer stank in there? Super hot water almost instantaneously after you're done drinking it. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do, too. But you that do, too. That's Febreze. <laughs> Spray that Febreze in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, if you're rinsing it out with super hot water, it's not going to have that stink. If you let it yeah. sit there for a long time, it's going to have some stink. Then you got to put some soap in it. Yeah. So what I do sometimes when it, you know, I've had my, I've used my growler a few times and I'm noticing it's it's getting a little bit of that that stank in it. What I do is I use about a eighth of a cup of distilled vinegar in, um, I pour that in with, and then I fill the growler up with water and I, the vinegar seems to work really well to clean it without it getting that soap, that like soap coating you were talking about. Hmm. And, um, yeah, I'll use that or, um, that's what another option I could use. I'll just use like a little, like a tablespoon of bleach and a full fill it up with water. And that kills everything. And then I don't know if I put out, bleach then, in my growler. Oh, I use bleach for everything. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big fan of bleach. So, so you have a dishwasher. We've we've established this. Yes. Does your dishwasher have a sanitized feature? I assume so. So, yeah. if you just put your growler in there with no soap and just let it run on sanitize, you'd probably be good too, because it would get so hot that anything inside of it would be sanitized away. That's that's a good point. That's a good option. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's another one. But for all my like... That's how I used to clean my beer bottles for brewing, was the dishwasher. Just put it in there, hit sanitize, and just go. That's pretty good. That's a good thought. Yeah. There you go. Then it's that's also like tip. a bottle rack, too, for for uh, bottling. Yeah, and like you can let them all dry right there and everything. Yeah, it's fantastic. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I never heard of that. I have seen people, oddly enough, um, if they clean out their, their growler, with hot water, like we were just talking about, they'll actually put them in the microwave to get rid of any excess water on the inside, which is kind of interesting. That so. is interesting. I usually just yeah. leave it upside down in the in the drying rack and just yeah. I mean, I do right. it. Hours. I've just seen yeah. people do it. I've seen people do it. So, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a hurry, <laughs> put it in there I for mean, I don't know 
30 seconds, I guess. I don't know how long it, I don't know how long it takes. I think a lot of people <laughs> need to realize that when you, when you go to the brewery and get a growler filled, they put water in it anyways to rinse it out before they put any beer in it too. Cause they want to make sure there's no dust particles and crap in it. Yeah. 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 Have you, have you guys ever been, and probably not, but have you ever seen anybody like turned away because their growler was too gross or no? I've had, I've had a brewery, uh, once like take a, a whiff of my growler and I mean, I, I'm pretty good at uh, keeping my growlers sanitary and clean. I disagree. But, but they, they like, definitely, you know, this had been rolling around in my car for a little while, but uh, they used their own, their sanitizer to rinse it out before they filled it up. So, mm. well, that's nice of them. Yeah. yeah. That's and my I, local favorite bonsai, by the way. I got to, I oh, got to nice. shout them out whenever I can. Yeah. Yeah. I've had one of their beers. Very good. It's, it's cool. It's, kind of cool but i'm thinking about it now and i'm like i don't get them very often but a lot of the breweries are doing the crowlers now yeah i like crowlers they're, they're pretty fantastic yeah i like the idea but now that i think about it i'm like i never i never get a fill like i never bring one home <laughs> like if i if i brought a growler though there's a good chance i'm filling my growler i don't know why it's just i have to break the mold maybe it's because i'm old i'm an old dad now so what i know. like about the idea with the crowler is that I've gotten a lot of, like, mixed beers in them, if that makes any sense. Like, for example, like, Labyrinth the other day was pouring a Session IPA and a pumpkin uh, cider in their brewery. And in the Crowler, they were able to make me a mixture of the cider, the pumpkin cider and the Session IPA and give me, like, a pumpkin Session IPA. It was fantastic. Wow. I like mixing yeah, beers, but I've never done it to take home. Yeah, me neither. I can't say I have. Maybe that's an idea for a future Future pod. We've done the French press beer now, but we should do like beer concoctions where we mix two beers together. That is there a really go. good idea. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Book it. I feel like that's much more of a summer idea than Ooh. a winter idea, but you know, <laughs> mix we'll a make step it with work. an IPA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when we do it, do we do it on our own terms, or do we have a crowler made of this concoction? Well, this I very few places near me that do crowlers. Um, oh, okay. I think that number is actually zero. So <laughs> <laughs> nobody does crowlers out there. Uh, the the crowler craze has not hit Northwest Montana yet. I don't believe. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, that old familiar sound. <laughs> I always wonder why, like, why when Chris is like bringing out the mail, like, does he struggle to like grab it with his hand? I want to know. Yeah. Like, this all happens <laughs> off camera, so we can't quite see what's happening. Right. But, but like, I'm no, really it's... curious how this mail makes so much noise. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, he, me, like, it's... it's me digging through the mail, what? trying to find the letter that we're going to answer. Oh, oh, I'm that's pretty right. sure you're okay. fighting like a, like, a male, like a male demon or like a male like golem or something in your house. Every, Just a possessed piece time. of mail. <laughs> so like this the is like now. Santa's mail bag that you're reaching into to find the right letter exactly okay. yeah, like you can't see it but i'm in three feet of mail over here so you know it's me digging through trying to find the right one see and i was thinking did you like, find like it page master I style did, I like did. angry book uh, for some reason i always dig for it but i can find it right away so <laughs> <laughs> well now that, I, now that i understand what's happening i can uh i can cheer on the digging next next episode <laughs> dig <laughs> dig dig <laughs> this explains dig why it. you have that shovel next to you too yeah yeah, exactly. Yes. So I I dug I dug deep and I finished my drink. So it's but, mailbag time. We have a letter. Yes. Yes, we have we have a we have a small a short one for us today and it's from a dad of the pod. So, um I'll give you a hint. It's Obert's dad. Hi dad. <laughs> so, he writes, "Dear DAWF, question for the three of you. My fridge temperature was turned too low and some of the beer froze. The cans and bottles of beer did not break. However, the soda did burst. So, oh, wow, that's, sorry for your loss. Yeah, that's too bad. I'm glad we got all the details, though. Uh, yeah, R that's true. R.I.P. Coke can exactly. Um, so he uh, he wonders: Will the excessive low temperature affect the beer, similar to excessive heat? So mm, that's a good um, point. We've talked about before how you don't want to nuke your your beer. Like too hot will break stuff right. down. Yeah. But will too cold be the same problem? And not not as bad. So from what I from what I've researched, it says if it freezes all the way through, um, it's likely to lose some carbonation and maybe taste a little flat. 
um, but it does still retain the beer characteristics as long as the seal is not broken. So can, bottle, whatever, which it sounds as though they're still intact. Now, so. I'm also curious, did, it, did the beer actually freeze? Because beer doesn't freeze at like Well, I don't think it will now. This, right. This, Obert's dad, what do you what do you think? I'm just I'm, I'm just kind of like call. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of wondering because like <laughs> I'm, I'm getting know, lost in the mailbag fiction by the way. <laughs> Is it <laughs> <laughs> Like beer beer freezes well below freezing. So, it's possible that it just got so cold that it was cold but it didn't actually freeze. Right. Cuz like yeah, Coke freezes at like 35 degrees or 33 degrees cuz it freezes above freezing. I know that for a fact. I mean, it's it's he it seemed as though he was pretty certain that it was frozen. Let's just assume it was frozen. Sorry. So. Did you say that you think that Coke freezes at 35 degrees? I was waiting for you to say that. I was just trying to get you get you <laughs> <Yeah>. riled up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to let t- uh, Chris finish, but Oh no, no, no. Go ahead. You can jump in. <laughs> I think that also will, would freeze below 32. I don't know. What what temperature does Coke freeze at? Oh. Well, uh, if I remember anything from chemistry class, is that when you add stuff to water, it lowers the freezing temperature and increases the boiling temperature. I disagree. I and think it also it's, it. it's under pressure. So I think that will also lower the freezing temperature. But 28 degrees. Boom. Well, there we go. Chris was able to Google it. <laughs> Well, there we go. Yeah, I, I know everything. So no, I just knew that. I, I would assume that beer freezes <laughs> many, many it... years of experience freezing, <laughs> freezing and not freezing coke. So Chris, tap into that knowledge base, and at what temperature does Bud Light freeze? Hold on, I have to dig into the back back and well, memory banks. Well, oh, well, also twenty eight degrees. Okay, how about oh, Bud? How about Bud Wiser? Wait, 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 hang on. Let me interrupt here. While Chris is looking this up, um, this brings me back. You know, next next week. It's going to be our Thanksgiving episode, right? So this is this is going to coming out the week before Thanksgiving, or the is week there another of, week? The week of Friendsgiving. Yeah. So this is coming out the week before Thanksgiving, the week of Friendsgiving, and um, we haven't talked about Friendsgiving a lot on this pod, but no, there was there was a time where Friendsgiving involved multiple kegs, and these multiple kegs would be outdoors in temperatures below thirty two degrees and uh, overnight. And they never, we had issues with taps freezing, mm. but I've never had issues with the keg beer freezing. So this is a very timely appropriate. <laughs> and so, so the tradition lives on. Tud is hosting Friendsgiving this year. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to find out which, which of Tud's friends actually listen by bringing this up in person. <laughs> so, uh, Not Friendsgiving. This is a test for all of Tud's friends. Yeah, this is a test. And I, I'm gonna guess that a lot of people fail. We're we're going to um we're gonna start a new tradition this year as well, there boys for Friendsgiving. Oh, I love traditions. I love new traditions. We have discussed brewing a beer on Friendsgiving. A Friendsgiving ale, if you if you will. Oh, I love this this idea. Mm. So there So that, that you can enjoy it around Christmas. Right. Or um, you know, depending on how you know, what type of ale you we can bottle it around Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, depending on how what type of ale we brew, we could also drink it next year too. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, then you could have an mm-hmm. annual tradition. I like it. I yeah. like it. You know, and so when you guys actually decide to come back for Friendsgiving, you guys can join into the into the tradition. I was going to say you're going to have to send us a bottle of that Friendsgiving ale. No, 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 no. You have to show up in person. It's like a limited release. But we're like we're like well, Obert more so than me, but like we're like two of the founding members of Friendsgiving. Yeah, and you guys bailed. Well, what we're going to do is. Chris and I are going to brew our own Friendsgiving ale remotely and then share it with each other and not with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure your it's beer would be suck better. anyways. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that is pretty cool, though. I like that. I like that. So, oh, man. So anyways, <laughs> that's that's mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> that's the mailbag. <laughs> your, your frozen beer is OK. It just might taste a little flat. Long story short, so Correct. I tell you what, this if has been even... the episode of tangents, guys. We I know it's crazy all over the place here. Yeah, if just, it even froze at all, just, I would like to throw that caveat in there. If right. it even froze at all, I'm yeah. sure he knows if a can is frozen or not. He's he's been around beer for a long time. So <laughs> yeah, he knows his way around a beer. <laughs> uh, but anyways, okay, shuffle it everything back 
into the ground. Shoves I also like how Chris like b- I like how Chris like reburies the letter after the mailbag is over. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, like not just like throw it back on top of the pile. He like it's, a, it's like got to go back like where it came from. Well, I don't want to accidentally pick it up again. Chris is like, let me put this in the archive. <laughs> Uh, we do have a few more in the tank. We'll get to them in the future weeks. So keep sending them in. We've been on a good streak of mailbags. Thank you, DAWF Friends of the Pod. We we love all your mail. We're excited to answer each and every one of your questions and thoughts, general or specific. But, uh, you know, we're, we're just out of time here. And, and and as a result, we have to go to that, that frosty, frosty mug of wisdom, thoughts, streaming services, Wisdom, me wisdom, etc. Because <laughs> um, we we haven't talked about one thing today. Well, we even talked about a couple of things today that we normally talk about. Um, and one of them is books. One of them is books, <laughs> and that's my handle. <laughs> my handle this week is a young adult novel which I have really enjoyed. And oh my god, can I guess? 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 Yeah. How to Train Your Dragon. No, this is a... It's a good movie. It is a good movie. It's a good book. But this is a uh, newer novel recommended from Fred of the Pond, Larissa. Um, this is called... How to Train Your Dragon 2. This is called Scythe, like the the thing the Grim Reaper uses, also the thing you use to harvest wheat. Oh, it's mm-hmm. Scythe. Yes, Scythe, as some people named Todd pronounce it. <laughs> um, the premise of the book is that it's... The distant future, computers have evolved to the point where they're smarter than humans, and as a result, they t- control humanity. And it's a utopia. The only problem is, as a result, people have l- people now live forever, but that causes another problem because there's overpopulation. So mm. the scythes are the ones who are ordained by the supercomputer to uh, kill people at random. To get the population back under control. It's a really entertaining book. It's the beginning of a series. The third book comes out any day now. It comes out November 2019, which is now. I'm in the middle of the second book. I've been struggling to get into some good series lately, but this one had me turning pages nonstop. I couldn't put it down. Like addicting young adult novels everywhere. It's a really easy read, and it helped me get back into reading this this time of year when when it's a little grayer out and you want to just sit by the fire and read a book. So mm-hmm. I really recommend Scythe. Um, check it out. And I think they're making it. There's there's talks of a deal with a, about a movie. So who knows? It could be coming out in 2025 or it could be canceled or whatever. But good enough to be maybe a movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's I think, awesome. I think, Chris, you have Audible. You listen to audiobooks. Yep, I'm add this, it up right now. Add this to your queue. I think you're going to be a big fan. Okay. I know uh, Chris's style. Neil Sh- Neil Shustern? Yeah, Neil or... Shusterman or whatever. Oh, Shusterman, yeah. Okay, It's there's a banner over the rest of his name. Okay, I was going to say, because myself and Larissa are he- both huge fans of King Killer Chronicles, so you know, I, I trust her taste in books. Which, so. <laughs> she does which have I good am, book taste. I, I have officially started All right. uh, the audio book, finally. Nice. It's only taken like you know forty episodes since you've given since you gifted it to me, but I'm gonna get there now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's yeah. So I'll add it to my add it to my queue. So we buried the lead here with my handle, but um, yep. I'm gonna hand it off to Chris for this next handle. All right. So uh, we mentioned it last week or two weeks ago. I don't remember, but uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield came out two days ago, and I'll just as of I'll recording just... time. Right, as of recording time. Right, yes. So a week and a day ago or six days ago, whatever that whatever that ends up being. Anyways. Have you caught them all? I have not caught them all, no. <laughs> well, I'm doing As of recording. By the time job. you're listening, he might have. <laughs> <laughs> At the rate I'm going, I might have. Um so I know there's been a lot of criticism and I even had some hesitations on it myself, but after picking up the game and playing through I don't know, thirteen hours or something like that, it's pretty fun. I really enjoy it. The story it's a Pokemon game, so I mean, you got to think of the key demographic. The key demographic is like you know children, but so the story is like pretty pretty easy, especially since I just power level, so you know that doesn't help. Um, what does that mean? Just like I'm I'm way over leveled for the stuff that I'm doing right now. So oh, okay. 
Yeah. You know, just like in almost any RPG, you can over level and just destroy everything. So, um, the one thing that I do like a lot about it is they added like a wilderness area, which is pretty large and you can access this anytime. You don't have to like wait there's a bunch of different kinds of pokemon different levels things like that so you've heard of the safari zone now it's time for the wilderness area well it's called the wild area okay but, you know Ooh. <laughs> but yeah no it's it's kind of like a safari zone just you know there's you can walk more than 500 paces in it and you can just spend all your time in there it's got a whole bunch of different uh different pokemon different levels um increasing in difficulty as as you get further away. Can you um, see the Pokemon in the game? Yes. They do have, like in Let's Go, you see the Pokemon in the in the overworld. Um, but they also have certain random encounters that you kind of have to like sneak up on a bush or whatever. But most of them are on, in the overworld, which I, which I like. I liked it a lot in Let's Go. Because then you can kind of, you know, ignore battles if you want. Versus completely random. But I'm enjoying it. I know a lot of people did not, and they were mad about the Pokedex, and I was hesitant about the Pokedex, but there's still like 400 Pokemon, so there's still plenty. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. There's no Bulbasaur, which is sad, but... Yeah. Um, so I heard a rumor about this game that Game Freak, the company that made it, had issues with like transferring the whole Pokedex over, and so... That's why there's so many missing, and that the next iteration of the games, like whatever after Sword and Shield is going to be, will have all of the Pokemon, including the new ones from this one. But there was just an issue with like the the transfer engine or something like that. There's a lot of excuses. There's a lot of a lot of issues about the 3D models and everything, but these right. are the same models that are used already in Go. So the reason yeah. they chose to eliminate some is not just because they weren't models. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I hadn't heard that. It could be right. I don't know. But um, honestly, I'm never wrong. I'm never wrong. <laughs> the Coke freezes at 35 degrees. There you go. Um, but, you know, you think about it, and for a, a more casual Pokemon player, you know, catching 400 Pokemon is a daunting task as it is. So who really needs to catch a thousand Pokemon? You know, like a, ca a casual Pokemon player, like a, like a Tud, for example. Yeah, I mean, you would you would be fine. You would have no qualms with what it is. Now I'm like 13 or 14 hours in, and I only have two badges. But. Can we, can we <laughs> can we take a step a step back here? Because so we, we've we've talked about this in previous episodes, but the reason that this Pokemon game is a big deal um, is because Pokemon has always been a handheld Game Boy DS etc. game. So right. Pokemon's always been something that you could play, and and for years Pokemon fans have been clamoring for Pokemon the experience on their console, and yes. this is the first Pokemon game that's released on Nintendo's home console, which is the Switch. Right. So so that's part of the hype. Part of the reason the the hype for this game is so high. Yeah, and and I mean I think it it lives up to the hype personally. Um, now. A lot of other users don't, um, but if you read any reviews from like actual gaming websites and things of that nature, a lot of them say it may very well be the best Pokemon game of all time. But you know, I don't know if I'm ready to you know usurp Pokemon Silver, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see when we get there. But um, but yeah, no, really enjoying it so far. Um, I'd like to open the floor to, for questions. <laughs> Perfect, no questions. No, I th I have <laughs> I think. Based on how you talk about it, I I have to get it. It's just a matter of time. You know, we both had the last Pokemon game for Switch. This is the first real real Pokemon game for console, and I I can't avoid getting it any longer. So I'm gonna go for no, it. I hear you. Yeah. So take that, all you naysayers. I say yay. Yay. So I should say yay then too. <laughs> peer pressure well, yeah. I, I don't know any po like like me getting the peer game, pressure like, is, not... is how tud gets pets and also pokemon I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not angry that like some pokemon are like in existence yeah. in the game because like i don't know them all yeah no i think it, it like i know be... what a bulbasaur is and if that's not in the game that's kind of upsetting yeah it is. And i know upsetting. like what like a squirtle is that's not in the game either and a pikachu but pikachu is i caught a pikachu and a charmander and a charmander is in the game but, but anyways, this has been so. Tudless Pokemon that he knows. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's me rambling about Pokemon. Tud, 
What's what's your handle? So ju- so just to point this out, the, there was a delay here. There's a really big Patreon exclusive that's going to happen. We cut like seven of minutes this. of Todd listing Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to hear that, go subscribe to Patreon. Yeah. There you go. Uh, my handle this week is uh, a streaming service that I think we all are subscribers to, including the uh, you know the man, the myth, the legend that is Obert out in Montana. Uh, it's it's um Disney Plus. Mm. If you guys don't know what Disney Plus is, I, I really can't help you. You've been living under a rock for this entire time. Honestly, the fact that we haven't mentioned it up until this point in the episode should have clued you in that it's going to be a handle because it's it's everywhere. You can't avoid it. <laughs> right. It's if like you Zubats. haven't heard of it, then I really want to be you because I want to know how you can just be so oblivious to not know that it existed because literally you see it everywhere. It's basically mm-hmm. Netflix, but for Disney stuff. Yeah. So every Disney movie, every Disney television show, um, Anything Disney's ever thought, plus new stuff, including The Mandalorian, which is excellent, all on Disney+. Plus. It's six ninety nine a month, or you can subscribe for the whole year, and you only pay $100. No, you only pay $85. It's like 70 bucks, yeah. Or something like that. It's cheap. You get like three months for free. So go to DisneyPlus.com and subscribe. Uh, Disney Plus is not a supporter of this podcast, but it is something yet. I think all three of They're us They're not like. a supporter yet. Correct. You gotta get Chris Pratt on here, and then... So over, if you... <laughs> If you are not a Disney Plus subscriber, which seems like you may not be, you got to get on that shit, man. How are you going to watch The Mandalorian without being a subscriber? Yeah, or I don't know. We'll figure it out. How are you going to learn what Bo- How are you going to learn who Boba Fett is without watching The Mandalorian? Probably with my hook for a hand. I don't know. My my eye patch. We'll figure some somehow. We'll figure it out. And actually, actually, I don't know if it's Boba Fett. It's I just not. assumed it was. Yeah, it's not Boba Fett. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> It's Same Chris idea. Pratt looks in like a Boba it. Fett costume. So yeah, yeah. So Obert, you don't have Disney Plus. I do not. You know, okay. um, streaming services. There's a lot coming out. There's we have. I mean, we got the Netflix. We got Hulu. We have the third one that everybody already has, Prime. But now we have Disney Plus. We got HBO. We got other ones in the in the works here. So, but you can cancel them at any time. You can cancel them at any time. And I think that everybody should sign up for Disney Plus because if there's one thing that Disney needs, it's your money. Exactly. So, See, I'm glad you help finally, them out. You help them out. Figured it out. You know, we um, could all just come up with like like podcast. But no, you know like who, what I want to know is and so share them between the three of us. So Chris yeah. has a son who's a big fan of Disney movies. Maybe you could even say almost as big a fan of Disney movies as Chris himself is. Mm, I don't know about that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he does enjoy Disney movies. So how has Disney Plus changed your viewing habits? Uh, so I don't watch Moana every day, so that's a plus. Oh, um, wow. Well, that's helpful. Yeah. No, it, it's it's really cool. Um, I mean... <laughs> All I can say is you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say except you're welcome? That's what um, I meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no. It's it's cool. I mean, being able like CJ and I sat on the couch the other day and watched Toy Story. You know, I did. I mean, he'd never seen Toy Story, and granted, I was more into it than he was. But like, you know, it opens up a lot of different variety. And be like, oh man, I forgot all about this show, or forgot all about this whatever. And sitting it and watching it with CJ is fun. So it's it, it it's very cool. Uh, I will probably keep it forever because you know, I I do as we as we alluded to, I enjoy disney so i like watching the movies and tv shows and all that stuff so uh, boy meets world's on there which is awesome (laughs) and smart guy do you guys remember smart guy that was a great show no that was the the little kid who was like a genius right yes yes yeah Yeah, i really enjoyed had to balance the uh, the struggles with being a genius with being a little kid yeah it was awesome (laughs) it was like a third grader that's in high school but now over i don't know about you but could you picture Chris sitting on the couch with CJ watching Toy Story and be like, CJ, you're missing the best part. You have oh, to understand yeah. this. I can like, imagine try, like, to explain it to him. the whole thing. Yeah. So this is Disney Plus related, but I saw a video a long time ago of like a dad watching Star Wars for the first time with like his five or six year old. And I was like, that is what I want to do with CJ because it, it got to the point. If I can find the YouTube video, we'll put it in the show notes. But it, there's a point where it's the 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 no, I am your father. You know that Empire, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, the I don't biggest know if you've reveal ever... in any movie ever, right? And the kid like 
loses his mind about it. So I'm Wait, like, who, who, who's whose father? Well, huh, let's uh, not put any spoilers yeah. in. No, the no spoilers. Here. No spoilers. Just CJ no. listens to the pod. So yeah, Ooh. yeah. So I'm excited for that. I want to do that so bad. <laughs> and well, see I'm what he for you. Yeah, I'm pretty. I hope internet don't ruin this for me. <laughs> yeah. No, I re- I found out that Disney Plus has all of the Disney Channel original movies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's got Johnny Miracle Tsunami, in the Fast Lane. It's got what's the skate one called? Brink. Brink. Yeah. It's. It also has Ducktales. It does have Ducktales. Yes. Yeah, the That's original. Disney. Yeah, and Darkwing Duck. Does it have the new Ducktales? Probably. With Ben Schwartz. Did, did Disney make that? Well, yeah, I don't think Disney gave up the rights to Donald Duck, so probably. So that I'm assuming then, yes, it's it's on there. I watched Remember the Titans the other day, which was fantastic. Great movie. The best soundtrack of any movie ever. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever heard the Forrest Gump soundtrack? Have you ever heard the Remember the Titans soundtrack? Yes. I thought you were talking about the, the Pretty Mercury movie, which is called Bohemian Rhapsody. Or we I could, mean, that's also a really good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Or or Flash Gordon has a really good soundtrack that's all composed by Queen. Yep. Yeah. But I don't know. Between Forrest that's Gump That's a discussion and, for another day. And remember the Titans. Like, that's a, that's a, right, th- right that's in. a battle. Right in. What Guardians movie has of the, the Galaxy soundtrack? one. Ooh, that one's good too. I don't Basically, know that one. That I bet one you. It doesn't you put, count because I haven't seen it. So. No, no. You just it have counts. to search on Spotify Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. You're going to be like, okay, that was a good soundtrack. I bet you if you put those three soundtracks next to each other about seven or between seven to ten of the same songs are on all three soundtracks yeah sweet home alabama um uh marvin Gaye's on them all like ain't, okay. no, ain't no mountain high yeah. enough <laughs> oh Uh-oh. man all right well so, anyway popcorn's got to go outside here so why don't we wrap this this up yeah, so with that, uh, we'd like to thank the, the breweries that provided today's beers. I'm going to go first with Russian River for, for providing me with Blind Pig, and I'm also going to give a special shout-out to Jordan for shipping that to me in the mail. I'd like to thank both Evil Twin Brewing and Prairie Artisan Ales for their Bible Belt Imperial Stout. And I want to thank uh, Fremont Brewery for their Dark Star 2019. It's delicious. Please make sure you're going on to all social medias and following us at DAWF Podcast. Also, make sure you're hashtag following the email at DAWF Podcast at gmail.com. Um, write in, let us know, let us know what, uh, soundtrack you think is the best soundtrack to any movie ever. Uh, make sure you're going on to our Patreon and subscribing, especially if you want to hear me try to name Pokemon for the, pa- for like seven to ten minutes, because that will definitely be on there. Why don't you entice them with something that they would want to listen to? Oh, people want to hear that. <laughs> Uh, also, make sure that if you're interested in anything that we talked about on today's podcast for our handles, go to our uh, our description and make sure you're clicking through there to see what we have. Other than that, happy happy Friendsgiving to all happy our listeners. Happy Friendsgiving, everybody. And make sure you're mm. following us on our social medias at DAWF Podcast. Thanks for repeating what I already said. Did you say that? I missed it. Yes, I did. Yeah. Sorry, I had a dog here. She's so distracting. <laughs> so with that, my name is Tud. My name's Chris. And I'm Obert. And remember, if you're drinking alone, do it with friends. Is Vaporeon a Pokemon? Vaporeon is a Pokemon. Vaporeon's a Pokemon. Yeah. It's my second favorite evolution. It's about right after Wa- Waterorion. Waterorion. How about Vaporeon? Pikachu? You're definitely. Yeah. You're walking with electric trenches. <laughs> uh, oh, what's the uh, mime? Yeah, Close. Mrs. Mime. Aunt, Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Aunt Jemima. Yeah, that's what it is. Aunt Jemima. <laughs> ba dumpsh. All right, bye, folks. <laughs> <laughs>